Okay, welcome everyone to Cucamonga Valley Medical Group's Healthy Living webinar. My name is Sabrina and I am a community health educator. I teach diabetes education classes. I teach weight loss classes. I teach these wonderful healthy living classes. So I love my job, I love what I do and I'm so happy to be here tonight with all of you. Um, tonight is interactive as always, so I have the chat function open, so please feel free to communicate with me on there. I'll be asking you questions. I also have the Q&A function open, so if you want to ask any questions, you can go ahead and plug them in there. And at the end, I save some time for a Q&A session, so you can also save your questions till the end as well. <clears throat> Tonight's healthy living topic is healthy cooking. And I am so excited for tonight's webinar because healthy cooking is something that I have been working on for a very long time. So I have a lot of great information to share tonight with all of you. And I usually like to make these webinars short and sweet, but for tonight, we're gonna dive all in. We're gonna go deep into healthy cooking. And that's because healthy cooking is truly the foundation of being healthy, right? We should be at home cooking some healthy meals for ourselves, for our family. So it really begins there. It is a foundation. So I really want to give you as much information as I can tonight. That way you get some good ideas on how you can start implementing healthy cooking at home. Before we get started, I want you to remember that healthy cooking is for everyone. It is the most easiest and the most simplest way to cook. It is meant for everyone, it is easy, it's simple, and it can really be delicious. And tonight we're going to be talking about how we can accomplish all of those things. So first we're going to talk about what is healthy cooking. We're going to give a definition, the do's and don'ts of healthy cooking methods, so the method you are using. And then we're going to figure out how we can implement healthy cooking at home, because I really believe that's where the trick is, right? We really got to get into it, start implementing it, and involving your family. <clears throat> so first we're gonna talk about what is healthy cooking. Well, healthy cooking means that you are cooking in a way that promotes your health. But what does that mean, right? Well, I'm gonna give you three rules that you can use to make sure you are cooking healthy at home. So our first rule, is you want to keep the nutrients in the food. You want to make sure your food is retaining nutrients. The nutrients is going to be things like the vitamins, the minerals, antioxidants, the fiber, the protein. We want to make sure that those things are staying in the food. That way we are getting all of those nutrients. And the thing is, is that when we cook or prepare food, Sometimes we can cause the nutrients to be destroyed or leave the food. This is called nutrient loss. And high levels of heat, light, or oxygen can cause nutrition loss. So you wanna make sure you are keeping the nutri nutrients in the food, so that way you're getting the nutrition your body needs. And I'm gonna be telling you how you can do that later on. So our second rule is you do not wanna add any unhealthy ingredients to your food. Well, what ingredients should we be avoiding? I like to call them the infamous three. So that's gonna be fat, salt, and sugar. You do not want high amounts of fat, salt, and sugar in your food. Well, why is that? Does anybody know? Does anyone wanna let me know in the chat? Because I know we always hear about fat, salt, and sugar. Well, why do we not want to be eating high amounts of that? Anybody want to give me a guess in the chat? Someone said insulin, yeah. Water retention, yes, definitely for salt, right? Thank you guys, thank you for your answers. So overall, eating high amounts of fat, salt, and sugar is gonna put you at risk for disease, such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, right? So we really want to prevent those things. Well, the problem is, is that we know that fat, salt, and sugar is what makes the food taste yummy, right? Well, later tonight, I'm gonna to be sharing some ways that you can make your food taste delicious without these unhealthy ingredients. 
And I think that's really the key to healthy cooking because we're getting rid of these unhealthy ingredients. And at the same time, we need to compensate for flavor. So we'll be talking about how to do that later. All right, so our third rule, our last rule for healthy cooking is you do not want to eat burnt food. You want to avoid burnt food. And you don't want to cook food to be black, to be burnt, to be crispy, because this actually causes to toxins to form in the food. These toxins are called carcinogens, meaning that they could potentially cause cancer. So let's say you throw some chicken on the grill, right? And it gets those black crispy pieces on the chicken. Well, those pieces now have toxins in those pieces that can potentially cause cancer. So it's really important when you are cooking, you want to avoid burning, charring, or blackening the food. So to review our rules really fast, we have keep your nutrients in the food, keep it low in salt, fat, and sugar, and you want to avoid burnt food. So those are our three rules to healthy cooking. Now let's switch gears and talk about the do's and the don'ts of healthy cooking methods. So what method are you using? Are you steaming? Are you baking, grilling? That's gonna be the method you are using to cook. So the first don't we have, we're gonna start with the don't, is you do not want to cook with butter. I'm sure we've heard this one before, but butter is high in fat. It is really not a health food. So you do not want to be, <clears throat> but butter is the meaning of life, <laughs> right? I know, but butter is going to be high in fat going to be high in the salt, it's going to be high in those things you want to avoid to prevent disease. So we definitely want to not be cooking with butter. Now, I'm going to also recommend do not cook with vegetable oil. Now, I know many of you might be surprised or maybe confused on this point, and I'm going to briefly explain why. So first, oil, vegetable oil, is fat from a vegetable. They take vegetables and they extract the oil, which is the fat. Okay, so the problem is, is that many vegetable oils have a low heat point, meaning they're not meant to be over the stove, over heat, right? Because we learned that what's going to happen is that it's going to burn. That oil is going to burn and it's going to form toxins in the food. So that is the first problem with vegetable oil. And the second problem is, is that you know, some of these oils have a higher heat point, right? I know, I think avocado oil has a higher heat point, but it's hard to tell when you reach that point, right? Are we measuring? Do we have a thermometer there? So you really don't know when you are hitting that point and you could be burning the oil and again, causing toxins to form in the food. My second big point about oil is that it is a fat and fat is high in calories and it's a fat, right? We want to keep our food low in fat, salt, and sugar. Now, even though vegetable oil is considered the healthy fat, it is unsaturated fat, but it is still a fat, and we do want to keep our diet low in fat to be the most optimum, to be ideal. Okay, so our next don't is grapeseed oil considered vegetable. It is. Yes, grapeseed oil is considered a vegetable oil. And I'm going to be giving you some swaps in, instead of oil to cook with. So we will get to that. So our next don't is you do not want to overcook your food. So let's say I have this beautiful bell pepper. This bell pepper is crispy. It's full of oxygen. It's full of nutrients and water. Okay, so it has a lot to give us if we eat this bell pepper. If we cook the bell pepper to be overcooked like this, it's going to destroy a lot of those nutrients, right? A lot of those nutrients. So we know that heat destroys. You put something over a fire, it will eventually be destroyed. And that's what happens with food to those precious nutrients. So we do not want to overcook our food. Our next don't, which I'm sure we've all heard, is you do not want to fry your food. Fried food is high in fat. It is high in calories. So this includes both pan frying and deep frying. And fried food is high in something we call trans fats. Trans fats have been directly linked to heart disease, directly linked. There is no argument there. So we really want to avoid fried food. So to review our don'ts is we have do not cook with butter or vegetable oil. Don't overcook your foods and don't fry your food.
So now what can we do? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. So the do's for our cooking methods, instead of cooking with butter or with vegetable oil, it is recommended to cook with water or with vegetable broth. So if you're cooking with broth, you just wanna make sure you're buying the one that is low in sodium. So again, keeping things low in salt. My personal favorite though is water. I love cooking with water. I just put a little water in a pan, I let it heat up. I throw my veggies in, I throw my seasoning in, and then let it cook for a second, and then boom, ready to go. So it's easy to use water. I know it's a learning curve. Um, I had to learn how to do that. I used to just cook with oil all the time. Before I put anything in the pan, I had to put oil in. Maybe some of you can relate with that. So it's just a habit we have to just maybe kind of get out of. So cooking with water and with broth is going to be a great healthy food spot. Okay, so our next do is do use your oven or an air fryer. Has anyone used an air fryer before? You can raise your hand. Do you have an air fryer? What do you think of your air fryer? Let me know in the chat. Have you ever heard of an air fryer before? They're kind of newer, I guess. <clears throat> Friends swear by it. Yeah, I know. And I'm going to swear by it right now. And someone says, I love my Instapot. Instapots are good. That's a good one. So an air fryer basically blows um, hot air all around. So it's an air fryer. You can buy them. They're, they're, they're available widely now. So the great thing about an air fryer is that you can get that yummy fried texture on food without frying and without oil. So it's a really a game changer for healthy food and kind of keeping things yummy. So I love my air fryer. Um, people always talk about their air fryer. So let's say I have potatoes. The unhealthy way to cook potatoes would be to chop them up and put them in a pan with oil and fry them, right? And then they come out, you got that beautiful texture. Well, with an air fryer, you just chop them up. You put a little season, you put it in the air fryer. And when they come out, they have that beautiful fried texture. No oil needed, no frying needed. And you can put all sorts of things in an air fryer. I put broccoli in an air fryer, give it a little texture on the outside. It's a really great tool. So do use an air fryer, that's recommended. And do use the oven. So baking, roasting, broiling, all those things with the oven, that's going to be a great do, good thing to start using. So our next do is do lightly cook your vegetables. And that's because vegetables is the main food group. Let's see, am I? There we go. Okay, do lightly cook your vegetables because they are the main food group that is packed with nutrients. They are packed with nutrients. So when we eat them, we wanna make sure we're getting the biggest bang for our buck. So it's recommended to steam them. You wanna keep them crunchy, right? I like to throw my veggies in at the last minute. So if I'm making a, a stir fry, veggie scramble, um, a soup, I just throw my veggies in at the last minute. That way they don't have a long time to cook and I still keep them crunchy, still keeping those nutrients. And steaming is a great option. Steaming is a great way to keep nutrients in the food. So our next do is do trim the fat from your meat. So if you eat meat, you want to make sure your meat is lean. Lean means low fat. So when cooking meat, you want to make sure to trim the fat off the meat. And that's because high fat meat can cause heart disease. The American Heart Association recommends that people who like to eat meat, that they should lean towards lean sources of meat, such as skinless poultry or fish. Those are going to be the recommended. And when cooking with meat, you can bake, broil, stew, or roast it would be the most healthy cooking method to use. Personally, I am a plant-based eater, so I don't cook too much with meat, but I used to. And if you're interested in learning about plant-based eating, I would love to dedicate one of these webinars to that. So you can let me know in the survey after this, or you can let me know in the chat. And for a healthy food plot for meat, that would be beans. Beans is a huge health food. I always recommend beans. We should be eating beans three servings a day. So find some ways to put some beans in. Maybe one meal, slip out 
swap out your chicken for some beans, and that's going to be a healthy food swap. Okay, so our next do is do use spices and herbs. There's a ton of spices out there, and we usually get stuck using the same ones. I know I'm guilty of this. So I encourage you to explore, experiment with some new non-salt spices and herbs. Lemon, lime, and garlic are also great for flavor as well. So I challenge you the next time you're at the store to buy a spice or an herb that you've never tried before and see how that works out for you. Okay, so to review our do's is do cook with broth or water. Very great, I know that's gonna take a little learning, but it's really a game changer in healthy cooking. Do use an oven or air fryer. Do lightly cook vegetables or steaming them is great. Do use spices and herbs. Do trim the fat off your meat. And the last one is do make soups. Soups are a great, great healthy cooking method because you can fill them up with fiber, beans, grains, they're hydrating and they are really great for weight loss. So soups is a great healthy cooking method to start trying as well. Okay, so we talked about what is healthy cooking, the do's and the don'ts of healthy cooking. Now we're gonna discuss how you can implement healthy cooking at home. Because that's really the trick, right? Is that I can sit here and say, don't fry, eat your veggies. But it's really about implementing it, doing it. That's where we're gonna get good at it. So the first way to implement healthy cooking at home is you must plan your meals for the week. You must plan your meals for the week. Does anyone currently do this? Does anyone actually write down their meals for the week, have a little list going? Let me know, raise your hand, let me know in the chat if you currently plan your meals for the week. <clears throat> okay. Not the whole week, but yes, yeah. So you're into it, you're getting it, right? Perfect. So I've noticed that when I went to make my meal plan, it was a little overwhelming. I didn't know what to make, I didn't know where to begin, I didn't know how much to make. So I kind of came across this system and I've been using it for a very long time and I wanted to share with you. So this is how you can plan your meals for the week. So, oh, before I get there, before I get there, I would love for you to write this down, is that you want to keep your ingredients, five ingredients or less. So whatever food you're cooking, whatever recipe you're cooking, five ingredients or less, not including the spices though, not including the spices. So that's gonna keep things easy, keep things simple, right? If your recipe calls for like 10 ingredients, that's gonna be really unnecessary, a big strain on you. So I recommend five ingredients or less, that's gonna keep things easy, simple, delicious, and nutritious. So five ingredients or less. Okay, so this is how I make my meal plan. First, I get a piece of paper and I write five columns down. And if you are on a phone or a computer, you can screenshot whatever I show. So that way you can kind of keep it for your notes or anything for your own reference. Okay, so I'd make five columns. My first column is grains and proteins. So I put these two together because usually I put them together and they're both really necessary for healthy eating. We need to be eating some whole grains. That's gonna make us feel full. That's gonna give us energy. Protein, we need to rebuild our body, to repair, to heal, so to grow. So protein is necessary. So here's my examples. That's some things that I will jot down. And I just jot down a few of my favorites. How am I feeling? Some things that I would be feeling. So maybe some wild rice and lentils, some baked tofu. I have baked salmon on here. Um, I make some quinoa, a pot of black beans. So this would be my grains and proteins. Just jot down a few of your favorites. My next column is my veggies because they're a must, right? We should be eating our veggies. Again, I just jot down a few of my favorites. So I'm gonna make a salad mix. I'm gonna do some steamed sweet potatoes, some raw carrot sticks, maybe some barbecue mushrooms. 
So whatever veggies I'm going to be making that week. And my next column is the sauces and the dips. So please put a star next to this column because this is my big tip for making healthy food delicious. Is we need some sauce, we need some dips. So as I'm writing this, I just look at my grains and my proteins and my veggies. And I think, hmm, what's going to go good with these? So what's going to go good with my salad? What's going to go good with my bit, my black beans? And then here are a few of my favorites I like to make. So a guacamole, salsa, a cashew cream. Those are really great if you haven't made one of those before. I make my home um, homemade marinara. Just get some tomatoes, put them in the oven, a little seasoning, blend them up with some basil. Boom, you got your own marinara some hummus, some ro roasted pepper dip. So you really want to be including some sauces and dips to keep things yummy. If you buy a sauce or a dip from the store, just make sure that it's going to be low in the infamous three. It's going to be low in salt, fat, and sugar. So making sure we're checking the labels and we're getting an appropriate product. Our next column is going to be breakfast. So what are you gonna eat for breakfast that day? Some people don't like to eat breakfast, so if you don't, you don't need to include this, but if you do, here's some examples that I would make. I would make some oatmeal, maybe a fruit smoothie, some baked muffins, a breakfast burrito. So whatever you're gonna have for breakfast that week. If you have um, kids or family members, or if you like snacks, then you can include a snack column. Here are some examples for snacks. So great thing about snacks, is that I think they're a great time to include nuts and seeds and fruit. That is a great time to get those nutritious foods because nuts and seeds are really high in nutrients and so is fruit. So including them in snacks is gonna be a great way to get them in us. So we can have almonds, um, almond butter and some apples, dates and nuts, trail mix is always great. You can make your own strawberries, a fruit popsicle. So these would be some good snack options. Okay, so we made our meal plan for the week. After I have this plan, I will go ahead and make a grocery list to align with it. So I say, hmm, I'm gonna make some guacamole this week. I'm gonna need some avocado, some lemon. I'm gonna make baked tofu. I'm gonna need some tofu. I'm gonna need some Cajun seasoning. Okay, so you would just make a corresponding grocery list with this. Okay, so you made your meal plan for the week. You got your grocery list. You go to the grocery store. You get all your beautiful groceries. The next part of implementing healthy cooking is that you need to pick one or two days to batch cook. I like to call it batch cooking because cooking in batches is easy. It's simple. Sometimes when we think of meal prep, we think of those ones on Instagram or Pinterest, right? Those like million Tupperwares, everything's perfectly um, portioned and picture perfect. Well, it doesn't have to be like that. Keep things easy and just batch cook. Make a pot of beans, make a pot of rice, make some noodles, right? So that's a good way to keep things um, easy for you, right? <clears throat> Does anyone batch cook? Does anyone cook just one day a week? Because that's our goal, right? I know you are busy, right? You are a busy person, you work, you probably have kids, you have a lot of things going on. So it is recommended to dedicate one or two days, depending on your schedule, to cook all of those healthy meals you plan. The day that I pick is Sunday. So Sunday I go groceries, I come home, I put on some music, a podcast, and I just cook up a storm. And that way the rest of the week, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. And then you can pick and choose what you made. So hmm, today I'm feeling like my black beans, some rice, oh, I might have some carrots with it, and oh, maybe a little guacamole. Okay, so that's very easy. Just make a bunch of batches of some healthy things, and then just pick and choose how you're feeling when you are hungry. <clears throat> so I am going to ask you is what day would work for you to batch cook? What day? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. Think about it. What day would be best for your schedule? What day are you thinking? Sundays work. Yeah, Sundays are the infamous batch cooking day for a lot of people, right? Some people work weekends, so maybe Monday would be your day or Wednesday would be your day. 
And again, this would depend on your family size, right? How many people are you feeding? So mix, when you make your meal plan, it's going to be a learning experience. Say, hmm, I didn't make enough last week. Or, ooh, I made way too much this week. I need to make sure I don't make too much next week. Okay, so our last topic for today is getting the family involved. And that's because many times our healthy eating fails because we have family members who just want to stick to their unhealthy favorites. Well, the first step in getting them involved is you really want to talk to them. Talk to them. Talk to them why healthy eating is important and how it can be beneficial to them, especially for kids. This isn't a great conversation to start having at a young age. Next is that when you're doing your meal plan, write down their favorite. Sit them with you. Hey, what's your favorite veggie? I only like carrots. Okay, write carrots down. We got carrots for you. All right, what's your favorite grain? Maybe you know, give them some options, some whole grain toast, some oatmeal. What are you feeling? So really get their input, get them involved. That's really going to get them into the process, getting involved in healthy cooking. Make healthier versions of their favorites. Okay, so if maybe their favorite is tacos, pizza. Um, find out some ways to make healthier versions of those foods. Get them involved, help them help, have them help out. So the last one just says involve them in planning and cooking. So this is a big, big, great skill to start teaching your family, young or old. Getting them involved in healthy cooking is a great skill to pass to your children. It is a lifelong skill they can use. Um, my children are a little too young to help out, like really help out. So what I like to do is I give them a bunch of scraps. And I just give them a butter knife or some fun utensils and some seasoning, and they just go to town. They just chop up some stuff. We have music going. We're all in the kitchen together. And it's really instilling those healthy eating habits. Cooking is important. So passing that down is going to be a great, great thing to do. All righty. So today we talked about what is healthy cooking. I gave you three rules you can use to make sure your cooking is healthy. We discussed the do's and the don'ts of healthy cooking methods. You learned a new way to plan some healthy meals, and you're going to pick one or two days to batch cook those healthy meals. And remember to keep things simple, keep things easy, and make sure your recipes are five ingredients or less. That's going to really make your life easy, simple, and nutritious. So let's go ahead and open our Q&A time. I would love to answer any questions you may have. I could see we already have a few, so I'm going to go ahead and look. Someone said, I think her name is Ariana, 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 I'm sorry, I'm so bad with names. Okay, but she asked, did you say three times a day for beans is canned okay? Yes, canned is great, and there's even research behind this. Canned has the same benefit to cook. The only thing with canned is make sure it is low sodium and you are rinsing them very well before you use them. You want to make sure there's no bubbles, nothing coming off of those beans. You want to make sure you rinse them very well. And that's going to be three servings a day. So I think a serving of beans is a half cup. So that would be two and a half cups a day of beans. So however you want to fit that in, maybe some for breakfast. Beans for breakfast is really great. It's a great option to include some beans and maybe some for dinner. So getting three servings of beans. Someone asked, will we be mailed a recorded video? Um, that's a great question, thank you. So on our website, the video will be posted, I think a couple days after today, and you can check that out at any time. We're also working on a YouTube channel, so all of these videos will be listed. So if you just wanna keep an eye on our website and you will definitely be informed when that happens. Someone asked if we can show the slides once again. I will do that. I will do that. After we finish answering questions, I will definitely show the slides once again. What do you do? What do you add instead of oil for the oven roasted veggies? I don't add anything. I don't add anything on it, right? We don't need it. We really don't. Um, again, we don't want to be overcooking the veggies. So we really don't need to put anything over it. I would recommend a little seasoning. 
So a little seasoning in it, get in them, get them lightly roasted. That way it just kind of changes the texture, but we're not roasting them until they are crispy because that way we'll be losing those nutrients. So you don't need to put anything. And if you're using uh, roasted veggies, you can even put little vegetable broth on the bottom. That's recommended too. So that's a good way to try to put some seasoning, a little bit of um, broth on the bottom so they don't burn. That's a good way, another swap as well. We don't have our channel link yet because we're working on the channel, but oh, let me give you the website link. I'll pull it up. Pulling it up now and I will be entering it in the chat. There we go. That's our new website for all of our fun and um, healthy stuff we're doing. So that's a good, it's called our health and wellness resource center. And one thing I want to say about cooking with oil is that we learned that oil is a fat and it's high in calories. So let's say you are cooking all three of your meals with vegetable oil. Well, you are adding a ton of hidden calories and fat to your meals that maybe you didn't think about. I know that was the case for me, right? I was trying to lose weight. I didn't figure I wasn't getting there. And I realized that I was using oil for everything. Every time I cooked, I added oil. So as soon as you stop doing that, you're really going to lower your fat intake. You're going to lower your calorie intake, which is going to be very beneficial. So again, I put that link in the chat. <clears throat> Do we have any more questions? All righty. I'm going to go ahead and share my slides um, for whoever would like to see them again. So here we just have our outline, the three rules. So we want to keep the nutrients. Hopefully I'm going slow enough. Um, nutrient loss, right? We don't want to do that. We want to keep our veggies crispy. Salt, fat, salt, and sugar. Avoiding burnt food. Oh, here, you know, these slides are better because it has everything on them. So here we go. If you want to screenshot that, take a picture of your phone if you like. And we had a great turnout tonight. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you found some valuable information. I know it was a lot, um, but hopefully you got some good ideas that you can take home. So here's the dome. Again, avoiding butter, oil. And if you're including oil, um, you can put it over a salad dressing, right? It is a it is a healthier fat, so you can put it in dressings, marinades, but just a smaller amount, right? We want to keep that fat intake low, our calories low. Lightly cook your veggies. So I have the do's over here. Do's. Any fun spice that you guys have tried that you might maybe want to recommend to me because I, I need some new spices. And then we have our meal plan here. Again, those sauces and the dips. So let me just, let's say I'm going to have, I have everything cooked in my fridge. And I say, hmm, I'm going to take out this whole grain pasta. Oh, I'm going to put a little steamed broccoli and I'm going to use my marinara. Put that together, put it in the microwave or a pan to heat up really fast. Boom. Oh, I'm going to have some baked tofu, um, some barbecue mushrooms. And then I might have my salad mix with that and my salad dressing. So again, you're just mixing and matching. Everything can go together. You can make it more synchronous. It would really be up to you. <clears throat> Pick one or day two to batch cook, getting your family involved. I know we got some picky eaters out there, especially children. So um, getting them involved is going to be really great. It's a great skill to start teaching them. Okay, and those were all of my slides. Hopefully I helped you out. Thank you, everyone. Everyone is leaving. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining. What about um, microwaving corn versus boiling in water? 
And what about the Mediterranean diet with olive oil? Yes, so the Mediterranean diet does use olive oil and the Mediterranean diet has been shown to have some health benefits. But again, we are eating olive oil at a smaller amount. And olive oil is a, is a healthier oil. Um, to even get olive oil, eat some olives. There's all different kinds of olives and that's a good way to really get those um, real benefits from olives, the olive oils in the olives, right? And the Mediterranean diet does emphasize olives and it has olive oil for dressing. So yeah, that's a good thing. Like I said, using it for dressing, that's gonna be a good healthy food swap. Microwaving corn versus boiling water. I would say boil the water. Boiling water would be a better choice. Microwaves, there's nothing wrong with microwaving, but I think boiling water, you're gonna get a better flavor, a better texture. Thank you, thank you. You are all very welcome. Thank you all for joining. Next month is about a, um, making a self-care plan. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can start your own self-care routine, taking care of yourself, some different areas of self-care. So I hope all of you can join me for that as well. Well, thank you all very much. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. <laughs>